Yes. There was a University of Pennsylvania happiness professor, and he was studying a group of students that had categorized themselves as severely depressed. He gave them one happiness-enhancing exercise, and that was every day, at the end of the day, to recall three positive things that happened that day. It could be anything. I got out of bed today. I brushed my teeth today. I didn't get eaten by a lion today. I mean, it could be anything. And what they found was that after 15 days of practicing recalling three happy things that happened each day, 94% of them recategorized themselves from being severely depressed to only mildly or moderately depressed. One simple activity, recalling three positive things, can totally change your life. Last week, before school started, I was speaking for a teacher kickoff, and I knew I was going to be sharing this research, so I was out in the lobby talking to some of the teachers before I went on stage, and I said to one of the teachers, what are three good things about being a teacher? And this woman looked at me, and she said, June, July, and August. <laughs> I thought, oh, honey, I am so glad you're going to be in my session. The reality is, there are a lot of miserable people out there. You might even know some of them. There are some people who are only happy being miserable. And some of them love it so much, they think it's their job to make you miserable too. Yeah, I see by the head bob, yeah. You know, there are certain people that when they show up for work in the morning, it just makes your day. And there are certain people, when they don't show up for work in the morning, it just makes your day. Yeah, those are those miserable people. Yeah. Nobody in this room is going to argue with me that happiness and fun are good for us. Most of us crave more happiness and fun. Look at how many of these speakers today have talked about it. The reason is because it's important to us. How many of you would love to have more fun in your life? Raise your hand. Yeah, more happiness, more laughter. Look around. That was almost everybody in the room. And there's, actually, there's a reason for that. It's that happiness is actually good for us. Medicine can now document that laughter and fun and happiness will lower our blood pressure, increase our endorphins, help our heart function, and actually even ramps up the cancer-fighting T cells in our body just from being happy. Can you imagine if you had to take a pill to get all those benefits? Yeah, you guys have seen the commercials. Side effects may include blurred vision, constipation, dry mouth, hair loss, uh, internal bleeding, skin rash, vomiting, thoughts of suicide, and renal failure. <laughs> renal failure? I don't even know where my renal is. I know I would just rather be happy than have it fail. So we know that happiness is good for us personally. But why does happiness at work matter? Well, for starters, most of us in this room are going to spend a third of our lives at work. That's a significant amount of time. Why wouldn't we want it to be fun and be happy there? But more importantly, why does it matter for business? Why does it matter for a company's bottom line? Well, let me tell you why it matters. Happy employees are 12% more productive. They miss 10 times less work. Happy salespeople have 37% higher sales numbers than their counterparts who are not happy. And this is the one you want to remember. Happy companies, companies with happy employees, outperform the competition by 20% just from being happy. In my keynotes, I build a case for why happiness at work matters. I share the factors that go into creating our happiness. And then I share what your people really want to know, which is six strategies for happiness. 40% of our happiness is based on intentional activities, things that we can control, practices, strategies, exercises that make us happier. I share six strategies, all backed by science, that are going to help people become happier. What I'm going to share with you in the rest of the time that I have is just a portion of just one of the strategies that I share. And to me, it's the one that kind of affects all of the others. It is that if we want to be happy, we have to see happy. We have to look for the good in every situation. 
I have been happily married to my haughty husband for 32 years, off and on. <laughs> That's a story for a whole nother day. <laughs> Early in our marriage, we actually endured a personal tragedy that was so devastating to both of us that we ended up getting divorced. And while we were divorced, we both went through counseling. And through our counseling, we were able to heal our pain and we got back together. We were getting married about two weeks later and my husband's counselor asked him to bring me to his final counseling appointment. When we get there, Dr. Phillips says, Kim, I asked Robert to bring you here because there's a story I want you both to hear. It's a story about two friends, Martha and Jill. Now, Martha, <sighs> She and her husband, they really, they didn't have a whole lot in common. They didn't like to do the same kind of things. They actually didn't even really enjoy each other's company. Jill, on the other hand, she and her husband still loved each other. They had fun together. They laughed together. They were very happy in their marriage. Well, Martha, she got a little sick and tired about hearing about how great Jill's husband was. So she said, Jill, I want you to keep a journal for me for just a week. And every time you have to ask him to do something twice, every time he leaves a mess in the kitchen or his socks on the bedroom floor, every time he irritates you, I want you to mark it down in your journal. Jill had no problem with that. She loved her husband. So she keeps this journal. And after a week, she has pages of things this man does that drives her crazy. Dr. Phillips stops the story right there. He looks my husband square in the eye and he says, Robert, do you know why I'm telling you this story? I was just glad he picked his hu my husband because I had no idea where we were going with the story. He says, Robert, I'm telling you this story because whatever you look for in Kim, you will find. See, whatever we look for in life, we will find. Whatever we look for in our coworkers, in our clients, in our companies, we will find. And if we want to be happy, we have to see happy. And we have to look for the best in every situation and every person. And it can be tough to do. You know, the Journal of Psychology says 85% of the information that we're exposed to on a daily basis is negative. And depending on what industry you're in, I know there's a lot of people here in the financial banking insurance, People are not knocking on their door saying, hey, just stop by to tell you things are going great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, in the Western culture that we all live in, it can also be challenging. Help me if you can complete any of these phrases. You better save money for a? This is too good to be? No pain? You've gotten the message. Life is hard and good things don't last. And that becomes a pattern of the way we see things. We see the negative. So I just want to see if you guys have any patterns you need to break. So being mindful of your neighbor, go ahead, take your right hand, bring it all the way out to the side, bring it up overhead, take it directly in front of you, make a fist, bring it to your chin. Bring it to your chin. I saw some of you doing the slide. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pattern, right? We do what we hear people say. We do what people do, not what they say. Just like Amy should with this, a pattern of how our brains jump to the highest whole number. So if we let our brain that works in patterns always go to the negative, we're going to get predictably negative outcomes. And I want to show you physically, I noticed I had a few visual learners in the room. <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, so I want to give you a demonstration. So I need somebody to come up here and help me. I need a volunteer. As long as it doesn't involve cake. <laughs> <laughs> no cake. Come on up. Let's give her a round of applause for being brave. All right. What's your name? Jenny. Jenny. All right, Jenny. Thank you. So I want you to stand here and I want you to look out at them. Step up here to the front. And I want you to say, I am so happy. I love my life. Good things always happen to me. I am so happy. I love my life and good things happen to me. All right. Put this arm out and I'm going to try to press down and you resist. Okay. Okay, there we are. Okay, you can put your hand Now I want you to look at them and I want you to say, I am just miserable. I hate my life. Bad things always happen. I'm just miserable. I hate my life. Bad things happen to me. Oh, put your arm out and again resist. <laughs> yeah. 
that's what negativity does. Now, those were your words too. Let's see what my words do. Jenny, it is just so brave of you in front of your peers, having no idea what's going to be asked of you, that you raised your hand. You only had one qualifier, no cake. And you said yes. <laughs> and, uh, and your company is lucky to have you. We're glad you're here today. Yes, put your arm back out and let's see where you are now. Okay, and you're going to try to resist, okay? Yeah. My words, my words. Do you get what that means? It's the words we say to ourselves and the words we say to others. They either tear them down and weaken them, or they build them up and make them stronger and bring them closer to happiness. Now, I never ask anybody on stage without giving them a present. Thank goodness I didn't pick cake, but I do have some mint Milanos. And if you don't want them, I'll take them back. <laughs> Let's give her a huge round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. In every situation, we have a choice to look for the good, to look for what's right, even in those difficult situations, to look for the lesson and how we can learn and how we can grow. I would love to share my other five strategies on, in my inspirational happiness keynote where I teach your people how they can become happier both at work and at home in my leadership keynotes where I teach leaders how to be happy leaders that get results, not resistance. I teach communication and how we can use positive communication to create happy teams. And then work-life balance and how we can find a happy life in this high-demand world. I have to tell you, my message is pretty universal. I can't say it's more suited for CEOs than it is admins, uh, managers than it is anybody else. The best place that you can use me is to kick off a event and set the positive happy tone for the whole um, program, or to use me as a closing keynote speaker where we can send everybody home on a happy, happy high. It has been my pleasure to spend these moments with you. Thank you. Thank you.